From Pat Cunningham Stadium at W.T. Woodson High School, WHCS Channel 29 presents Group AAA Division VI Finals High School Football. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz, and we're here at Pat Cunningham Stadium for the final game between the Hampton Crabbers and T.C. Williams. Bob, this is not the first time these teams have met. What have you got to talk about as far well, as T.C. Williams? Tim, th this is going to be an exciting game. First of all, it's the rubber match between these three games, uh, these two teams. In 1984, they met. Uh, the Titans come out ahead 10 to nothing. In 85, Hampton came back up uh, and, and beat them 16 to nothing to win the state championship. Last year, they beat Salem for their second consecutive. This will be the third chance and, and a chance to set some uh, some goals that's going to be hard to reach. Uh, we'll look for a tremendous game because both teams are very stingy defensively, Tim. They give up very few points. Hampton is probably the, got the best defensive team, only averaging allowing about 3.7 points a game. But T.C. Williams on the other hand, only allows about four point three points a game, so it's going to be a tremendous defensive struggle. Uh, T.C. Williams has popped off in the newspapers up here like they did two years ago that uh, they're going to hold Hampton and beat them 30 to nothing, but I tell you that nobody's going to score 30 points in this Hampton team. They're tremendously well coached, and uh, the coaching staff does a tremendous job, Tim, of, of getting these young men ready for the, today's game. Well, that is true, and that's one of the things that you and I have talked about on numerous occasions, Bob, is the fact that Coach Mike Smith and his staff do a superb job preparing the team and adjustments that are made at halftime are always right on the button. The, the Hampton coaching staff is an excellent coaching staff and they are probably the big difference. This coach here at T.C. Williams has got a tremendous record, 64-9-2 since he's come here. Right. And you know, you're talking about a defensive game. Hampton allows a little less than four points. T.C. Williams a little more than four. So it looks like it's going to be a defensive battle. It looks like it'll be a low scoring game. But you know, so many times we see this happen, these teams come out and you don't know what's going to happen. Well, let me go on the, the limb here for a second, Tim. I've done this before, but I know what the T.C. Williams uses a 5-0 defense and they crash the ends. So that the game plan right now, is, from what I understand, is Hampton will pass more today and more short passes. They've been known to pass long, but they'll pass to the flats where the linebackers have to, to uh, cover that area and it's going to be hard for the linebackers to get there because Hampton has such a potent running attack. They've got to stay home until they sure it is going to be a pass, and so that'll give Hampton a chance to get somebody out in that flat, especially if they can get their, their good uh, receivers like uh, uh McLean, Grady McLean, for instance, and uh, and their tight end. So, th and they'll even throw this to the back some today. But the team that controls the line of scrimmage today will win the ball game. I really believe that. All right, we should have one heck of a ball game. The 12 and 1 Hampton Crabbers versus T.C. Williams, undefeated, 13 and 0. Both of these teams have appeared in the top 25 according to USA Today throughout the season. In fact, until Hampton was defeated by Bethel, they were in fact ranked in the top 25. That defeat tossed them out of those particular standings. They'd like nothing better than to show T.C. Williams they belong ahead of them in the standings. We're in for a great ball game. Hope you'll stay tuned. We'll also have an added attraction today. Home Team Sports has been kind enough to give us yeah. their feed, and we will have instant replays for you. So this game will be a little extra special for us. 1987 Virginia State Championship game. First, I would like to introduce the Crabbers from Hampton High School. Their defense for today's game. Starting at defensive end. Number 32, Andre Davis. Defensive end, number 42, Todd Summer. At guard, number 60, Weymouth Williams. At guard, number 55, Jeff Lawrence. At guard, number 65, Muhammad Carlos. At tackle, number 88, James Wilson. At linebacker, number 70, Sherwood Jones. At linebacker, number 80, Rocky Carlos. Defensive back, number one, Tony Hyman. Defensive back, number 80, and, correction, number eight, Anthony Phillips. At safety, number 22, Brady McLean. And now the rest of the Crabbers from Hampton High School.
This is Tim Cole. Bob Gitz is with me. We are at TC. Josh Geiger. We are actually WT Woodson and High School. Now we're having an introduction of the lineups 50, for TC Williams. Nassar Roman. At right guard, number 64, D. Reeves. At left tackle, number 56, Eric Trainum. At right tackle, number 77, Tony Trainum. At left end, number 33, Eddie Petty. At right end, number 82, Anthony Benson. At quarterback, Number 18, Ricky Morrow. At halfback, number 40, Lydell Scott. At halfback, number 48, Keith Burns. At flanker, number 24, Eric Anderson. And kicking off is playing, number 10, John Huster. at the same time. All right, well, we have number 24, Eric Anderson, along with number 72, Tracy Fells, for the Titans. They'll be in the white pants, the red jerseys with the white numerals. The Hampton Crabbers, represented by Raymond Williams, number 60, and Sherwood Jones, number 70. And they will be the co-captain the Hampton Crabbers. Yeah, I need to get in touch with our director in the booth there, because we're having a terrible time with our audio here. Well, we got a chance. Let me go over the officials for the game's officials today. Uh, the referee is Charlie Klo. The umpire is Carl Davis. The linesman is James Drews. Line judge is Irving Taylor. Back judge is George Lewis. And they have an alternate, Dennis Hall. And this is a group out of the Richmond area, Tim. They use uh, uh, officials that are completely neutral when they do this, that they neither one have seen either one of these two teams play this year. So it kind of makes it easier and better for the, the players. And we can see that the, uh, I got to figure out who's who. Here <laughs> yeah, that's the tough part about having red and white uniforms for both teams. Well, Hampton is uh, receiving. I got across and say they're in the white, red pants. Okay. Uh, so those of you at home, the red and white is most prolific this afternoon. The Travers will have the white jerseys with the red numerals. down on the crowd, Mike, so we won't be quite so hard-pressed to hear. And we're about set to go. Jewsbury has it teed up. It's on the way. It's going to be taken at the 10-yard line. Todd 
Summers. Summers out across the 20 to about the 23. And that's where the Crabbers will set up first and 10. The quarterback, Eric Hunter. Mike Stefanko will be one of the starting backfield members for the Crabbers. And he, Todd Summers, and Dwayne Murphy will do a lot of the ball carrying for the Crabbers this afternoon. Uh, they sure will. They both they have been uh, successful all year long, but they have not run into a defense as tough as this, nor has the Titans run into a defense as tough as Hampton has, Tim. Starting at the 23. This is Stefanko, left side, nothing happening, as Dwayne Murphy is also in the backfield and I should make mention of the fact that we have one gorgeous afternoon for football here. Oh, this is an excellent excellent day for football Tim. The, 50 the degrees sky plus. is basically cloudless and uh, tremendous sun as you can see on the screen. So as those of you who have been with us throughout the playoffs have known the temperatures and the winds and the rains all those different factors will not be a factor this afternoon as the Hampton Crabbers and the Titans of T.C. Williams will be under ideal conditions. Here see a good shot of Eric Hunter over the center. Hunter fakes, has time, looks downfield, now throws, and it goes incomplete. Tim, he had an open that the fake that he did that time to the, the back diving off left was wide open. And uh, he could have probably run that ball and, and picked up enough yardage, but uh, it was a design pass play, and Eric is a good passer. But this brings up a definitely pass situation, third and long. As you can see, some of the Titan coaches staff, we didn't get a chance to go over the uh, coaches staffs of both teams, Tim, unless you did while I was gone. No, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, do that momentarily. Brian okay. Gerzak, by the way, was the intended receiver downfield. Brian Gerzak not one of the big numbers as far as the catch is concerned. Grady McLean, the leading receiver for the Crabbers. But Gerzak has been there when the play uh, has been the big play. Third down and ten, and now we have a flag. We're going to have a, no, I've checked that. We're going to have a time out, I believe, so this Tim. give us a chance to mention the coaching staff. Right, let me go over the coaches for the uh, T.C. Williams team right, right, uh, real quick. Glenn Furman, as you talked about earlier, has got a tremendous record since he's been at T.C. Williams. He's assisted by Dennis Shaw, Don Futrell, Bill Allen, Robert White, Bill Yost, and uh, Jim Congolini. That's the coaching staff of the T.C. Williams Titans. And for the Hampton Crabbers, of course, head coach Mike Smith. He's assisted by Alvis Mann, Danny Mitchell, Walter Brower, and Steve Washington, and yet another person. Yes, they have a kicking coach out there by the name of Lanny uh, Franklin that's doing an excellent job for them, and we have uh, failed to mention his name all year long because he's not on our stat sheet, but uh, we definitely need to mention him because he is an integral part of that coaching defense, uh, coaching uh, staff also. Well, we certainly uh, send our apologies because we certainly didn't do so intentionally, but our congratulations to him if he has had anything to do with the prolific aspect of the kicking game with uh, Mike Houston doing a super job. And, you know, we're, when I get a chance here, I want to kind of recap last week's games that led to this game. Third down and 10, a big third down for the Crabbers. Hunter drops straight back, looks over, had a man open, threw the ball too high and behind the intended receiver. And that was... The man on the pattern was Grady McLean, number 22. That was just a bad pass. Yeah, he was. He threw it too hard and too high. And, of course, the adrenaline is really flowing. These young men are really excited on both teams. Uh, they're looking for this game. And uh, Coach Mike Smith told the team last year, last week when they played the uh, Fauquier Falcons, he said, this is the game to get us to this game. And uh, Eustad, what a super, super kick all the way back to the 32. It's fumbled momentarily. Then it's picked up. And some running room. Midfield down the sidelines, stuck to the rounds, but not before he gets inside the 35 yard line. So a big play for the Titans, as none other than Lydell Scott, their big running back, their tailback, carries that ball. It looked like he was stopped back at his 35 and gets all of it down to the Crabber 37 yard line. Tim Scott, Lydell Scott was a starter two years ago when they lost to Hampton up here 16 to nothing, and uh, he would. Uh, would sure love to uh, stop that uh, and, and make a win today. So he's out for a little revenge, I'm sure. Ricky Morrow is the quarterback. He hands off into the middle of the line for a yard or two, amongst others, for the Crabbers in on the stop. The Denny Mitchell, number 63, Muhammad Carlos, number 65, and of course, the ever 
present way with Williams, number 60 for the Crabbers. But Jim, they have two quarterbacks, number 18 and number 14. 14 is a passing quarterback, and 18 is not. 18 has not completed a pass all year, but 14 has. That's the other way around. Is it the other way around? Well, yeah. they have number 14 now, and, and who is not noted That's as Brim. the passing quarterback That's then. Brim, who has not completed a pass. He takes the snap from center, goes right off the left side, and picks up good yardage down close to the 30-yard line. So the Titans will look at a third down and about two for the first down as they run the ball predominantly, as you said. Now, when, when number 14, Kevin Brim, is in there, he is not going to pass that often. He's only no. thrown the ball four times all season, while his counterpart, the other quarterback, uh, Ricky Morrow, who is Morrow, and he is 32 out of 81 for 550 yards. On the option, this goes back to Lydell Scott. Scott will have the first down. And you can see what kind of a runner he is, Tim. He was hit, and uh, after he was hit, he kept his legs moving, and extra effort really got him that first down. But here we see on the instant replay the fake to the man in the middle and the pitch to uh, Lydell Scott, and as he goes over to the right side and picks up the fr uh, first down for the Titans. Ball is marked at the 25 of Hampton early in the ball game. 9.07 to go. The clock is moving. We have no score. This is the initial possession for Williams. This is Scott off the left side, down close to the 20-yard line. So Scott, who carried the ball over 300 times during the regular season for the Titans, averaged 145 yards per game and amassed a total of 27 touchdowns. So Lydell Scott is certainly a force to be contended with as you were looking into, or at least you were, into the huddle of the T.C. Williams Titans. And Jim, he's got some big linemen up there that open up holes for him. As you can see, he's lined up in the backfield. And this is a quarterback keeper. keeper this time. Tim, excuse me. That's all right. The quarterback keeper, Brim, down close to the 16-yard line as the Titans are predominantly a ground attack team. And, of course, as we mentioned, they, they don't make any bones about it. When 14 is in there, when Brim is the quarterback, they're not going to pass. When 18 is in there in the form of the other quarterback, Ricky Merrill, they more than likely will pass. So there's a, a certain amount of keying that you can do in a situation like this. We've got a third down and a long one for the Titans. Big play for the Crabbers. Scott is hit, but apparently will have enough for the first down. It's going to be close. But again, his forward progress appears to have enough for the first down. Well, he was hit and then driven forward. He was hit from the side, and he had enough momentum going. And when he was hit, he, he fell forward and probably picked up that first yard. But you can see number 77 there for the uh, Titans. That's uh, Tony Trainum. He is one big guy. He's 300 pounds, Tim. Six foot, 300 pounds. He, he, he's a hunk. It's going to be real close for the first down. It's, the ball is going to be just across the 15. It is not a first down. So it's going to be just inches shy. And this brings up probably the, as big a play as early in the ball game as you can have. A fourth well, down. Well, Tim, there's, there's no doubt that they'll go go with it. And I, I, do not, I do not look for a pass, but I do look for them to a uh, quarterback sneaker, uh, sneak or quarterback keeper over to the left or right side following his, uh, his all-state lineman there. Their field goal kicker, Ralph Sims, is two for five on the season. That's not important as Brim takes the ball, gets the first down, and then some as he goes right off the right side of that line and gets the first down. That's the... Well, Tim, that was the side that the big Tony Tram, number uh, 77, was on, and they just beat Hampton to the punch that time. But, you know, you only had to pick up about six to eight inches anyway, and you could fall forward and pick that up. To the Crabber defense. As you can see on the instant replay. Tim, we, we're very fortunate to have this instant replay today with the home team sports. We really appreciate that. Rim pitches out. Scott gets away from one would-be tackler along the sidelines. Is thrown out of bounds. Sherwood Jones over there along with number 65, Muhammad Carlos of the Crabbers. But again, not before Scott picks up substantial yardage. He picks up about seven. So it'll be second down and three. And every time you get seven yards, there we see the replay. You see Grady McLean coming up. He has a shot at Scott, but Scott does a good job of getting around him. And then Scott is finally hit out of bounds. Again, Sherbert Jones putting the finishing touches on him. And Muhammad Carlos was the man who actually knocked Scott out of bounds. Second down and about two and a half or three yards for the Titans. Brim following that blocking on the left side goes right up the middle, more or less. Uh, again, they don't make any bones about it. They just simply go student body left and go. And the, Tim, they do a good job of uh, 
as we got a timeout that they do a good job of following their blockers. They really do. All the runners for the T.C. Williams and for the Hampton Crabbers do a good job of following their linemen and, and watching the blocks uh, open up the holes. You can see the Hampton coaching staff over there, Lanny and uh, uh, Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, Lanny Franklin and Alvis Mann standing over on the side. First down for the Titans. That's now it's a first and goal. Well, this is, Hampton team has not had many teams uh, score on them this year. But I tell you what, Tim, they get down here, they really are tough. Well, they're going to have to be tough now. There you see big trainer, number 77. Quarterback keeper, he's trying to struggle in as Brim is the ball carrier. No signal of a touchdown at this moment, so it's going to be shy of the touchdown. Six minutes, 45 seconds. The time remaining here in the first quarter. We play four 12-minute quarters in high school. Well, Tim, this is going to put a lot of pressure on the Hampton Crabbers because uh, uh, Brim has had a, a lot of success running ball on a keeper, and, of course, and you got a tremendous back like Lydell Scott, so uh, Hampton's got to watch both of them. Yeah, we've got a touchdown, but... First quarter, Tim, and what set that up was that tremendous uh, run back on that punt at the uh, after Hampton punted that they got a tremendous run back, as you can see there on the instant replay getting into the end zone. Extra point try is good. So the extra point try is good by Sims, who converted 46 out of 50 during the regular season. And there you see our score. We are having some audio problems here in the booth. We're losing our volume. I don't know about you, but I can't hear very well, and I don't know whether our director, we unfortunately don't have any direct line to the director. I'd tell him without being on well, the Well, I think air. we just cleaned it up a little bit, Tim. That <laughs> sounds better from my headphone anyway. But that was just another shot of the, uh, of the touchdown scored by Brim. So the Crabbers now are going to have to come from behind. They aren't used to trailing. Well, they Tim, they have trailed. Scored. They trailed uh, Kickatan both times they played them. Uh, Kickatan scored first both times, but they uh, ended up coming back in one of those two games. And Kickatan offense is very, very similar to what the uh, Titans run. It's a, uh, the Veer offense. So uh, this is not a un unusual offense that uh, the Hampton Crabbers are facing. They they think that the Titans have a better defense than the Crabber, I mean than the, the Kickatan Warriors, but their offense is not as good. Dewsbury has it teed up. This will be taken by McLean inside the 10 and about the 8. McLean right up the middle. Good field position for the Crabbers now as they'll start from somewhere around the 36-yard line, 35-yard line. Well, he so. had an alley that time, Tim, and somebody got a hand on his, his ankle and, and tripped him up because he would have picked up a lot of yardage and could very well have broke that, as you can see here on the instant replay. Right there, somebody just did hit him. That was an excellent return by uh, Grady. Grady McLean, one of the new bright spots for the Crabbers. From their 34, the Crabbers set up. Eric Hunter is the quarterback, wants to pass. His intended receiver had fallen down as Grady McLean, the man we made reference to a moment ago, turned at about the 45-yard line. And as he did so, he slipped. And this field is extremely damp as, of course, there was substantial rain up here during the middle of the week. And the sidelines are just that. They're well, soaked. Yeah, they do have a tarp, Tim, but I don't know if they used the tarp to cover up the field or not. But I do know they have a tarp up here. But as you said, the field is, is kind of soggy. And uh, the, if you got to make a, a, a a quick cut, you got to plant a foot, and if that goes out from under you, then you're down, and that could really create havoc in that there could be a pass interception because you're not uh, on the pass route that you were supposed to be on. Tony Hyman sets up to the left side, wide to the left. McLean is wide to the right. The handoff comes to Todd Summers. Summers gets across the 30 to about the 31. So Summers gets a few yards. You know, you were talking about the Crabbers were going to be going with the pass a lot. You know, I... I Tim, how come was there, there was a penalty or something there I missed? I missed. Because now it's second and uh, it must have been a long penalty or something because it was second. But 
He picked up eight yards, so it was second, uh, first and 20 for some reason. Now must we're second and 12. Must have been a holding penalty against yeah, the Yeah, I missed that, Tim. I'm sorry. So now it's second down and 12 for the Crabbers. Hunter has time. Again, he is not on target. He had a man open. That was uh, Dwayne Murphy coming across the middle, I believe. Let me see. We have seen uh, Eric Hunter pass the ball this year. It has been very, very successful at it, but he looks like to me that he is hurrying his pass. He's throwing it too hard. Uh, his adrenaline is going. And you can see Don Musselman on, uh, on camera there. That's uh, superintendent of the Hampton City Schools, along with uh, John Castleberry of uh, TV 10 Sports that's here working with uh, home team sports. So the Crabbers have again got a big situation, third down and about 12. Hyman comes to the near side. Stefanko gets the pitch out. And he's going to be well shy of the first down, no question about that. In the backfield for the Crabbers was Andre Davis, number 32. So there's a new wrinkle. Well, Andre Davis uh, is has played for the Hampton Crabbers, but he has been playing uh, basically a defensive uh, uh, end, but he is listed as a fullback also, Tim, but we have not seen him play that much at fullback this year. So Mike Houston will be standing inside of his 25 now as the Crabbers have fourth down and 12. The offense has sputtered here in the first half. Houston again gets a booming kick all the way down to the 23-yard line. This is Lydell Scott trying to get around to the near side of the field and is chased out of bounds. Over there defending was Tony Billups, Ike Billups of the Hampton Crabbers, as he, there you see the mud on the jersey. Check that, Brian Gerzak was also in on number 81, was in on that uh, tackle too. In fact, he was the last one to get up uh, uh, off of the, uh, the kick returner, Lydell Scott. They don't have as good a field position this time, Tim. In fact, I got a better view now. I, I get in these corners. I don't know how I always end up in the corners. So leading seven to nothing, they'll start from their 36-yard line. Fumble on the exchange, the ball is loose, and it is quickly fallen upon by Ricky Morrow, the quarterback. So the Williams team will lose some yardage. Again, I wanted to take a chance, if I may, to mention to you how T.C. Williams and the Hampton Crabbers, there you're going to see it on the replay, the snap from center was never really handled cleanly by Morrow. He had to scramble for the football. Boy, would that have been a big break for the Crabbers had they sure been able to on it. Uh, anyway, uh, the Williams team got here defeating uh, Highland Springs 26 to 7 and this Lydell, Lydell Scott we referred to had 133 yards on 25 carries last week. This time it works. This is Scott, left side. He struggles for yardage out close to the 40. Tim, I don't know if you caught it now, but Andre Davis went off uh, kind of uh, hurt and bent over a little bit just, just before that play started. You can see him on the sideline. Evidently, he might have gotten a wind knocked out of him or, or something, but uh, he was uh, uh, going off to, uh, and they had a substitute come in for him, and in fact, the official called officials timeout until he could get off the field. Ricky Morrow comes out of the ball game. The running quarterback, Brim, comes in as we're looking at a third down and about four for the Titans. This is Brim, left side off the, the, uh, the left side of the line, and he will be shy of the first down, and I will wait and see. Oh, it's he... definitely shy. He's got to get across to 45, Tim, and it's spotted at the 44. So he's got to cross to 45 to about the 45 and a half, and it looks like they're sending in their punting unit, and that'll put uh, number 44, Mike Stefanko, deep for the uh, Crabbers. John Jewsbury will be the quarter of the uh, kicker, rather. He averages a little more than 32 yards every time he kicks the ball. He'll be standing at about his 30. Mike Stefanko will be the lone deep setback for the Crabbers back inside of his 25. So what breeze there is, and it's not substantial, will be coming across and into the face of the kicker. Little or no rush by the Crabbers. He gets the kick away. It's a good one. At the 23, Stefanko looks to, to run to his right now, looking for blocks. He and picks he's up getting a couple some of them. Days. He's picking a line over there, Tim. He got some blocks. Stefanko all the way down the sidelines, across the 40 to the 35. I look to see any yellow hankies. I, I see something over there on the sideline, Tim. There is a flank. Yep, Go back to is. about the 37-yard line. Well, that's the that's first terrible. Thing well, that was an excellent, excellent run back. He had a nice picket line set up over there for the return to the right-hand side. Well, we'll see it on replay, I'm sure. Here we go. This is Stefanko. Now, watch these blocks that come up here. Right back there, Mike Grace is a couple of heavy-duty blocks. That wasn't a clip. I'm not sure see where the clip here. 
Uh, he got him, but he got him from the side, if anything. That looked like a clean block. It here. was. That was just a bad call of the official. Well, if that, in fact, was the call, we can't be Well, sure. on the history replay, Tim, there was nobody that was getting blocked that we could see that was uh, uh, clipped at all. That was uh, an excellent run back and an excellent special teams effort by the Crabbers that uh, goes for naught. Oh, what a terrible penalty that is for the Crabbers, too. They would have had the ball inside the 35-yard line of T.C. Williams. Instead, now, they'll have it at their 20. So that must have been the point that the official threw the flag. And, uh, well, you can't get them all, but that did look like a highly questionable call. A crucial call to the crowd. Absolutely. It definitely was. It, that was about a 50-yard penalty there, Tim, at least. Sure was. All right, nonetheless. 2.20 remains, the Crabbers trailing seven to nothing. Inside handoff, nothing happening there as this tough T.C. Williams team only allowed a 105 yards per game total by their opponents. So, I mean, this is a team that just doesn't give up a lot of points. I mentioned while you were away trying to get the starting lineups for us that Williams only had two teams score more than 10 points against them, and that happened on two occasions, and they ended up shutting out seven of their opponents, not dissimilar to the Crabbers who shut out six. That's true. And that's what I said at the top of the, 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 the broadcast that both of these are excellent defensive teams. Hunter has time. Now gets it out to Dwayne Murphy at the 18. He's across the 20 to about the 23. He's stuck hard there by the Titans of T.C. Williams. <laughs> time running down here in the first quarter. A minute and a half to go. Crabbers have seen the T.C. Williams team take the punt after their initial possession and drive from the 35 in on straight plays. They really didn't have any problem scoring the T.C. Williams. Well, they had just one play that they had to go fourth and uh, pick up about uh, half a yard, Tim. That was the only uh, play that was uh, put any pressure on them at all. They have picked up enough yardage each time. We've got a third and six, so we'll see what the Crabbers come up with. And we have motion on the Crabbers. Did we have encroachment first is the only question. Well, it looked like the Williams defender crossed the line before. Sure, the yeah, because the uh, Hampton Crabber defensive, I mean, offensive backfield, they can, well, you can have you can a man in motion. It. Sure. And that's exactly what happened is Hampton put a man in motion. It's the first time they've done it all year. Two years ago. Remember the game that played here where Hampton used that irregular cadence? On yeah, the well, they do the, the irregular cadence, but it's the first time. Yeah. See, Hampton doesn't put people in motion. And so the T.C. Williams people know this. And, of course, that <laughs> that makes it third and very short rather than third and six. It's uh, third and, uh, let's call it one. Play is coming in from the sidelines. Brian Gerzak will bring the play in to Eric Hunter, the big 6'4 quarterback for the Crappers. Grady McLean will come out on this play. He'll be replaced by Gerzak. There you see head coach Mike Smith and the staff. Not sure how we got that shot. <laughs> Third and one. But we'll take it. Third down and one. Tight formation to the outside. And he's got the first down and plenty more. Todd Summers out close to the 44-yard line. So the Crabbers are in business. Well, Tim, I want to take a minute here to talk about Todd Summers. I ran in here at the ball game, I mean, over at the Hampton School the other day. And he says that I'm bigger than those other two guys that you hooked <laughs> me. We're going to look at it again. This is Hunter handing off to Summers. Summers sees the middle is clogged up and then goes outside. Again, a good sign of a running back. You, you see the hole filled, so you go to the light, daylight, and Summers more or less tripped over his own blocker out there, but did a super job getting good yardage. First down for the Crabbers at the 44. Now we have an official timeout. That should be at the end of the quarter, Tim. That's it. The first quarter has come to an end, so we've seen 12 minutes of the championship game. We've got 36 minutes to go, and uh, Bob has been, you know, if I haven't had a chance to say this, it's been a real pleasure working with you all this season with the regular season games that we've done. We've had some super good ball oh, games. Uh, you and I were talking coming up here today how excited we get for these ball games, but this uh, the adrenaline was flowing uh, <laughs> on the way up here. We ran into uh, Bobby Croft and uh, Larry Waddell coming up and kind of followed them coming up uh, today. But uh, this is just an excellent day for football. The, the weather's uh, really cooperated much better than it was a couple weeks ago. We've done a couple games this year that's <laughs> been, you said it, chilled to the bone. Well, you know, what's happened is as the season has gotten deeper into winter, the weather is getting milder. So I'm not going to argue with it. Last uh, week we had do it. snow flurries. <laughs> That's right. Last stadium the week before, we had uh, Drain. rains. Oh, terrible. Flurries the week before that. So yeah. we're very thankful for many things, not the least of which is the fine job that our 
crew has done game in and game out. They came up here yesterday afternoon and set up and have done their usual fine job. And of course, our thanks to home team sports. And more importantly than any of those things, Phil Turner right here. Oh, I'll yes. to him in just a minute. Pitch back goes to Stefanko. It loses his footing as he turns the corner. Picks up a couple of yards. Not, not more importantly than, than Dr. Sam. No, 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 no. But no. Phil Turner. Phil Turner did a job of getting us our spot here in the booth. Uh, he has worked with us. Now, Phil is a uh, uh, Peninsula uh, native anyway. He, he coached with my brother over at Eaton Junior High School, and then he was at Denby High School in Newport News. And I've known Phil for a long, long time, and we sure appreciate all he has done to make it uh, easy for us to set up here for our crew and all. And our hats off to him and our sincere thanks to all the fine folks here at W.T. Woodson, which is, uh, of course, not the home field for T.C. Williams. Second down and about eight for the Crabbers. This is Todd Summers as he crosses midfield. The ball comes loose, and we've got a fumble. It belongs to the Titans. So Summers, who has been extremely reliable all year long, coughed the ball up as he was trying to get that extra yard, as so many times happens in your efforts to get a little bit extra. You take a gamble, and that time the ball came loose. You'll you can see, see right, right there the ball come loose right as he was hit. He was upended real well. Uh, he is a gutty runner, and uh, that's a break for the Titans because they got the ball right at the midfield stripe, Tim. So the Crabbers turned the ball over. You know, in the last six games, the Titans have had 18 takeovers while only committing five turnovers of their own. So they don't make mistakes. The Titans are that type of team. Andre Davis has the quarterback wrapped up neatly at the 49 of Hampton. Well, I tell you what, this defensive team for the Hampton Crabbers are, are going to really knuckle down and try to get that ball back. As you can see, the uh, coaching staff of Mike Smith right there and Danny Mitchell on the headset. But uh, they are told uh, what they've got to do do and you stay home and those people will come to you and don't do anything fancy and you'll stop them and beat them and I know that's what the Crabbers have got to do Tim but they got to get the ball back. Brim got a yard second down and nine for the Titans. Down close to the 45 of Hampton that's Lydell Scott getting the call. He follows that blocking of Trainum. Boy, gracious, what a horse Trainum is now. 300, 300 pounds, pounds six foot, 300 pounds, and uh, yeah, he's a hard man to stop. I don't think you have a nickname like Choo Choo Trainum or something like uh, that. Something. Dude. Caboose Trainum. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't want to, don't tell him where I live. <laughs> 950. That was Tim Cole that said that. <laughs> At the 45, it's third down and five. And that's a first down, and then some across the 40 down to the 37. Looked like Scott might go for more, but he was tripped up, and we may get a chance to see a replay of that. If we do, I think what you'll see is, is Scott broke through the line. Here we go. They got, excellent, they got an excellent blocking from number 64, uh, which is a trap block, and that was Jamie Patterson. The, I'm sorry, not uh, D wrong team. That's D. Rice, who did an excellent job of trapping and opened up that hole. Now, Hampton's a hard team to trap. Ball mark just shy of the 35, first down. And again, good yardage, almost six yards, as it's going to be marked across the 30 again. This is, well, check that. I started to say it's Scott, but in fact, it is number 48 for them. That's Keith Burns, and Burns had a good season for the Titans. Burns well, ended up with 372 yards in a spot roll. Well, he was supposed to go straight ahead on a dive, Tim, and Hampton had that plugged right up, and he just bounced out to the outside, and that's how he ended up picking up about those, those six yards that he picked up. And that's what he got, second down and four for the Titans. Pitch out, comes to Scott. Scott spins away from a would-be tackler, down close to the 27-yard line. First well, that's, man in there was uh, Andre, Brady, or check that Andre Davis. Right, let me, let me explain just a second, Tim. Now, that's, Hampton knew that's what he was going to do. Andre Davis knows when the Lydell Scott splits out a little bit wide that it's going to be a quick pitch. And you can see that as soon as he got the ball that uh, Davis was there, but he let him get a little spin and get away and pick up two or three yards. So it's third down now, big third down for the Crabbers. Third down and about one. Brim on the option, has the first down, tucks it under, and gets the first down at the 23-yard line. So the diversified attack of the T.C. Williams team is showing up well. They run the ball, they keep running at you. The clock continues to move, a little more than eight minutes.
minutes to go here in the first half. It's 7-0. Keith Burns has a one-yard touchdown, and the extra point by Jewsbury was good. And that's our only score of the ball game. As you saw on instant replay, what a good job that the quarterback did that time of picking up that yardage. Inside for Scott. Maybe well, a yard or two. Excuse me, Tim. He slipped that time when he tried to play on his left foot and break off to the right because the hole was plugged up and he slipped, so he had no choice but to go straight ahead. The Hampton Crabbers are doing a great job defensively of blocking, uh, uh, blocking up the holes. There's no holes for the dive, but it, uh, the uh, W.T. Woods, I'm sorry, the uh, T.C. Williams backs have a good job, do a good job of bouncing outside and picking up the yardage. Picked up two for Scott. That's second down and eight for the Titans. Ball mark just shy of the 20. And now Brim will pass, and it is going to be picked off inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Excellent, excellent job. That Brim job. McLean has done it again for the Crabbers. McLean has been a stalwart on both offense and defense for the Crabbers. And he picks off this pass, so he will stop the tight rush, so to speak. And again, you go back to that clipping call or that holding call, whatever the call was on the run. There's back. a re replay on that pass, Tim. And there you see Andre Davis has the better shot at it. And he come, juggles it momentarily, but then he comes up with it. And the Crabbers have shut down the Titans' attack. You know, I wanted to get back to the fact, you and I were talking about how big a game that was last week uh, where the Crabbers beat the Falcons up there in Warrington. And uh, Mike Houston had a tremendous game that game when you consider the fact that, well, I'll get to that in just a minute. From the eight-yard line, Stefanko breaks into the open. He's got some yardage up close to the 18-yard line. Very close to a first down, Tim, but that's extra effort. Uh, Mike Stefanko and, and uh, Todd Summers both do an excellent job of picking up extra yardage after they break through the line of scrimmage. As we see this on replay. Stefanko gets good blocking. Again, that offensive line for the Crappers doing their usual fine job. And, you know, at the top of the show, I was mentioning how the defense is such an important part of this team. Actually, that's not really fair because the offensive line and the rest of the team are just as important to this team. You Absolutely. Any aspect of this game. Get me back to what I wanted to say. First down, Tim. First Go down ahead. for the Crabbers. Mike Houston had probably the biggest plays of the game last week. You and I were talking coming up in the car yeah. on how Houston's kicking was so instrumental. Yeah. Absolutely. Not necessarily the points that he got, which were important. He got the extra point and the field goal, the extra point being the margin of victory. But he sidestepped a rushing defenseman late in the game and got a 54-yard cutoff. And without that, who knows how this game would have turned out. Todd Summers picks up about five, out close to the 25. So the Crabbers are grinding it out now. And you know, I'm not going to second guess Mike Smith. I haven't tried all year, and I'm sure not going to try it now. But they came out throwing. And you talked about how the Crabbers might throw. The Crabbers really aren't a throwing football team. Well, they're more of a running team, but uh, sometimes you got to take what the defense gives you. And the defense definitely gives the flat. And as you saw early in this game, Tim, those receivers were wide open. I mean, it wasn't that he wasn't thrown into double coverage or a man that wasn't open, the man slid and fell down, or he just wasn't an excellent pass. That's a real good point. Second down and five. We have motion and flags down. Now we'll see whether or not the Titans It was were definitely uh, offside on the, the Titans, which will make it very close to a first down. But that's a big number, 72, for the Titans. Tim, that's Tracy uh, Fells. Uh, that young man goes 240, 6'2", 240. So he's no, uh, <laughs> he no shrimp out there for sure. He is a good-sized young man. So they're going to that's a first down, Tim. Well, it's going to be just inches shy of a first down. No, they're moving, they're moving to the uh, the, uh, I take that back. James. You're right. I thought it was just shy, but in fact, you're right. It will mark a first down for the Crabbers. So they get a first down out of the play. Again, we're having some difficulty trying to override the field, Mike. It's a little noisy here at the stadium. That guy was offside too, Tim. No flag. Summers trying to go laterally. Doesn't have much success. You saw the good pursuit of the T.C. Williams team as Summers, who has good quickness, just simply couldn't turn the corner. Well, in high school football, you cannot get into the neutral zone, and I would have believed that that one defensive player got into the neutral zone, but he was not uh, flagged at all. But again, that'll happen. Uh, you know, our vantage point from here, it looked like he was, but we're not straight across, so uh, it's hard to tell. As you saw the instant replay of Summers, did not pick up much yardage that time. Yeah. Todd Summers, I'm happy to say, is a junior and will, of course, be back for the Crabbers next season. Gerzak 
is the split end. Now he goes into the tight end position. Hunter will pass, has time, now gets some pressure. Runs out of the pocket, picks up some good blocks, and runs downfield and then takes the easy course out to live another day. Yeah, he sure did. He stepped out of bounds, but he got some good blocks there from his downfield receivers. There you see Coach Mike Smith surrounded by his team and one of the officials in on the play. Mike Smith does send the plays in. He does, in fact, call the plays on the sideline. But he normally will rotate the plays in with his running backs, Tim. Uh, Stefanko and Summers are the well, ones doing that... It a little differently today. He's doing it with McLean and Hyman on occasion. McLean will come in this time and bring the play in. And he'll stay in as uh, the split end, number 87, will leave for the Crabbers. And that is Corey Cofield. So it's third down and five. The Crabbers trailing seven to nothing. Four minutes to go in the half. They need a first down. Hunter has time, throws, and again, a poorly thrown pass as the intended receiver, McLean, down the sidelines at the 45 was open, but he just simply couldn't get to the football. The, the pass receivers have been open all day, Tim. Uh, he just is not getting the ball to him. He's throwing it high a couple times. He's throwing it low. He's throwing it behind him. Uh, that, so that brings up a fourth down and uh, number five. Uh, Mike Houston is in the punt, and he'll kick this ball from about the 25-yard line. And he'll be kicking into a little bit of a wind, whereas in the first quarter he wasn't. You'll get it away. It's a good spiral. It's going to take a Hampton bounce, and it'll roll all the way inside the 30 down to the 25. So he, he hit that ball at his 25, and it's blown dead at their 25. But that ball is uh, actually is from the 35 is where it'll be uh, marked from, Tim. Breaker, he's on. I was trying to figure out if we had a flag on the field. They were slow to bring the markers down. Well, the, the uh, chain went down, but the marker yeah. stayed where it was, which was uh, unusual. But he wanted to make, and that's smart because he wanted to make sure that it was the play uh, goes as stand as we only got 3.30 left to go in the first half. And I'm again down here where I can't see. wants to throw long. He throws a man out on the pattern, a fly pattern down the sidelines, and it goes incomplete as the ball was intended for Eric Anderson, the leading ball receiver for the Titans of T.C. Williams. Anderson comes into the game with 17 catches for a little more than 300 yards on the season. Defending our players, number eight, Ike Billups, and uh, I have got a chance to uh, meet and know Ike a little bit because he works in Mike Smith's office. When I go over to talk with Mike, I get to talk a little bit with Ike, and he's done an excellent job this year at the defense. Defensive back. No, not many people have thrown the ball against Hampton, uh, and it's because they have a good pass rush, but also they have a good uh, pass defense with their uh, defensive backs. Second down and ten, a look-in pass again. For whatever reason, the Titans decide they want to throw the ball a little bit themselves. Well, Tim, with uh, the time on the clock, they know they can't drive the ball down, that they're going to have to pick up a bunch of yardage via the pass, evidently. But that was intended for number 33. Who is that, Eddie Petty? Eddie, I like that name. <laughs> ah, that's all right. <laughs> so the clock stops 318. So uh, oddly enough, the the Titans do go to the air on two consecutive plays. And I think this kind of plays into the hands of the Crabbers. That's exactly my feeling. You picking up my thoughts, Tim, because that's exactly what I'm thinking. So again, looking to pass. Got a man wide open at the 30-yard line. And even I could have caught that ball as he had all day. They didn't go for the long pass. They took a one receiver and, and sent him down the field to clear the zone, and this guy just went down into a hook zone and picked up the first down. As you can see, the coach uh, for the Titans over there talking to one of his ball players. That's Here's the instant replay on that. There was nobody within five yards of him. He had all kinds of time. That's J.J. Moynlin, and he picks up plenty of yardage for the Crabbers in a prevent defense, more or less. Well, they had three men that went back with the long receiver, which is uh, a no-no. They go back to the running attack now as Lydell Scott will get the call and he'll go up close to midfield. They'll mark it at about the 48-yard line. Well, you can see he's an excellent runner, Tim, but he just uh, is a real powerful runner. He's got some speed, but it's going to be hard for them to take this ball down with 230 and score by uh, uh, without getting a big play and picking up a lot of yardage because they've got about 52 yards to go before they can get it into the end zone. And this Hampton Crabber defense is tough. Second and three, seven yards on the carry for Scott. Quarterback is creamed as he lets it go. 
contact downfield, no flag forthcoming. As the quarterback, Merrill, Ricky Merrill, really took a, uh, a hit after he released the football. He sure yeah. did that time. That was Antonio Hyman and uh, Grady McLean both defending on that play that time, Tim. And the, the ball was kind of thrown up. As you can see, the, the, the pass coming down this time, we were looking at the ball. But you can see that Tony Antonio Hyman really had a better chance at catching that ball than did the uh, receiver. So it's third down and three for the Titans. They want to keep this drive alive. They need three yards. Pitch back comes near side. That is Burns, Keith Burns, who gets the call. And he'll be real close to a first down. It will determine. If he marks that ball where he's standing, it is not a first down. Tim. It does appear that he will and it will be shy by about a yard. So they've got it marked just across the 50 and it'll look like it'll be a yard or less for the first down. But I don't think they'll kick the ball at this point Tim with 140 and counting and I don't look for him to kick the ball. They're going to go ahead and try to pick it up. This is, this, this is a test for the Crabbers. It'd be a nice time to get it turned over right here. And now a timeout. I'm not sure who the timeout will be charged to. Well, they say the Crabbers will be charged with the timeout. That'll be their second timeout of the half. Well, Mike Smith wants to talk to him because if they can stop him here and get the ball, they got a minute and 30. And uh, Eric is a uh, Eric Hunter, the quarterback for Hampton, is an excellent passer, Tim. Oh, although he's not been on the, the mark today, as uh, you can see the crowd and some of these uh, brave young men running around. This was last week, I would have said they're crazy. It's not that cold out here today, but last week. Uh, but we remember last week there was one young man up there, Warrington, uh, on the coaching staff that had on a T-shirt and shorts, and the uh, wind chill factor was below 20. So. I think they came for him with the uh, the suit that, that has no sleeves and the rubber room after that game because I'm telling you, you had to be a little bit a little bit off center to uh, be out in that kind of way. That was, I mean, we were cold where we were, and we weren't out in in it like he was. As you can see, Mike Smith walking off to the sideline. Now, the this Hampton Crabber team will do a tremendous job of uh, making some adjustments during halftime, and uh, I look forward to come back this second half and just do an excellent job. Speaking of halftime, I hope we'll have a chance for A.G. Womble to have someone to interview here at the break. We're a minute and 30 seconds away from that point. Fourth down in uh, foot, and Burns has more than enough for the first down. So if you key on Scott, they'll give it to Burns, and Burns is no no bad looking running back. Well, and then the quarterback is a good, does a good job running the ball when he keeps it too, Tim. When you got short yardage like that, they've been very successful, and they had, that's the second time they have done that today, that they have picked up the yardage uh, fourth and uh, short. All right, first down at the Hampton 46. This is Scott coming through the middle, down to about the 42. Got a break. And uh, they're going to call timeout, Tim. They being the Titans, they want to stop the clock because we've got a minute three to go. And it's uh, second down and looks like about uh, long seven or seven yards to go. So as you can see the crowd here on the sidelines. You know, we were talking about it, how good a coach this Glenn Perman is with a 64-9-2 and two record. Mike Smith has amassed an incredible record, which will be hard for anyone to top. 174 victories, only 27 losses and two ties at his tenure in high school football. So our hat's off to Mike Smith, and congratulations again. Morrow wants to pass, has the ball knocked out of his hands, it's loose, he picks it up and salvages what could have been a real crucial play for the Titans. Well, that's for sure because it was a Hampton Crabber very close to getting that ball. Number 61 for the Crabbers, uh, Kenny Mabry had a chance at the ball and uh, he ended up picking up about three yards, three to four yards on that attempt, so he's very fortunate to uh, end up with something. Now there's another timeout on the field. They yeah, saw in the replay a chance, uh, as you said, very alertly on the part of Merrill to pick the ball up and actually gain yardage on it. One of the Crabbers had a shot at it. I wasn't able to, to pick up his... I think weapon. it was Mabry, the one who had a chance. I think you're right. I, I don't Maybe think Mabry. he's the one to knock the ball out. And what happened was the quarterback stepped up and in his efforts looked downfield, he kind of was looking away and, and Mabry just flicked in there with his hand and knocked it away. Uh, Tim, uh, Hampton has been a dominant power in the state uh, for, uh, well, well, during the last 12 years, they've walked away with, with, uh, with six uh, state championships championships and the Titans are the only team that's even come close to challenging them man for it. But I tell you Mike Smith's record of 174 27 tie losses and two ties is gonna be hard for anybody to uh, catch because he continues right on uh, uh, he 
keeps right on uh, coaching, so that means that he's going to be around for a while, Tim. And he's got an excellent coaching staff. 50 seconds to go in the half. Third down and three. Got a man open. He's got it completed inside the 35 at the 31-yard line. They're going to mark it close to the 30, but he did not get out of bounds. Now we'll have a stopping of the clock while they reset the chains. And then the clock will be immediately restarted if the Titans don't call a timeout, which I do not see them doing. Oh, and, sure they the, left. and the, uh, the uh, head official there did start the clock, Tim, so it is moving. It's 333 and counting. Now close to a half a minute to go. Inside handoff. This is Burns. This has got to be their last timeout, Tim. They had, in fact, it is their last timeout. 23 seconds ago, so they're going to have to put the ball in the air. And, of course, Hampton will, will try to stop them. And Coach Mike Smith is coming out to talk to his defense to make sure they understand their responsibilities. Don't let anybody get behind them and, you know, what they've got to do to make sure that uh, the Titans don't score. And that was Lydell Scott, not Burns. 40 and 48 are the numbers uh, that we're dealing with here, and they are similar in stature. <laughs> I've heard that they before. <laughs> I'm telling you, Burns is 6'2", 175, and Scott is 6'1", 175, so they look, they run similar. They have that slashing, powerful running attack. As the clock shows 23 seconds to go in the first half, we have only one score. I'm Tim Cole with Bob Hintz and A.G. Wobble. We're coming to you from Pat Cunningham Stadium in Fairfax, Virginia, the group AAA Division Six Finals. That's for all the marbles. The Hampton Crabbers have had a tremendous season, 12 and one. T.C. Williams, both of these teams have been ranked in the top 25 by USA Today throughout the season. Uh, we're seeing the kind of game we expected to see, a hard fought game at seven to nothing. And I'm sure we'll see a half, there you see Mike Smith, a half similar to this coming up. And I hope you'll stay tuned for the second half. Merrill wants to pass, gets pressure. He's gonna be taken down. The Crabbers have him and they're not gonna let go. There you go. There is once again, Mr. Mabry, who was instrumental moments ago of knocking the ball away. And then this time he grabbed and held on to the quarterback. And Tim, they're not even gonna get another playoff. I know, well, if they do, they're gonna have to hustle. One no, second. They didn't get it. They did not get the playoff. So they used up their timeouts. They couldn't get the extra play off, and the Crabbers go into the locker room, trailing by the score of seven to nothing. The score coming early in the ball game in the first quarter with 6:21 to go. A super return of the punt by Mike Houston. He literally outkicked his coverage, I believe. Uh, Lydell Scott brought it all the way back down to the 35-yard line of Hampton, and in seven or eight plays, they took it in the final yard by Keith. Keith Burns at 6.21 to go in the first quarter. And that's our only score as with the extra point, it was seven to nothing. We'll be back with more of the Group AAA Division Six Finals after this brief timeout. The third year in a row, the state champions, but uh, they've got a task in front of them. They have to battle this T.C. Williams team. I'm not sure who A.G. is trying to find over there, are you? I don't either, but he's, uh, he's over there at, uh, towards the end zone to our left, Tim. All right, Tim, Bob, we got Dr. Don again, Don Musman. Uh, Don, uh, we got off to a little slow start. What are your thoughts on this first half? Well, you know, I think T.C. Williams has come out here uh, with a lot of emotion. Uh, of course, they got a good return on that first punt. And, of course, moved it in. Took him a hard time to get it in the end zone. But I think the turning point so far in this first half when Stefanko's 60-yard run was called back for a penalty. No, I, I saw that block. It looked like I haven't seen the instant replay. It looked like a bad call to me. Well, you know, it's the third time we played T.C. Williams, and we haven't played at home yet. We're still here on foreign soil. Yeah, was, look, I was I was watching the block. It looked like me. He got his head around. I don't know if they'll sit on this play, but, but that play did hurt us. Oh, ex exactly, exactly. That was a beautiful block. Okay. Don, uh, second half now. We're down 7-0. I know. Uh, what do you think Coach Smith's telling the boys now, and what do you think it's going to take to pull this thing out? Well, I think he's got him in there, and he's going to show them some of the things to stop number 48 and uh, the big number 40, the boy who's been really gaining a lot of yards. But I think they're going to get it together this half okay. and do what they have to do. I think it's going to come down to a close final. Okay, Don, uh, maybe three in a row here. Uh, boy, let's hope so. Okay, thanks a lot. Dr. Right. Don Musselman.
Tim Barr, we have now Phil Turner, who's the athletic director here for W.T. Woodson in charge of this uh, AAA event. Uh, Phil, what all is involved in putting on a big event like this? Well, it, it takes a lot of time to put it on. We've been working on it all week because of the weather and everything, having the tarp on the field and trying to keep it nice. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of work to do, but we enjoy it. All right, uh, perfect weather today for this game. Thank goodness, yeah. Right. Phil, uh, you're up here in northern Virginia now, but you're a native from uh, Newport News. I believe you used to play for Newport News High School. That's correct. Uh, the Hampton Newport News game used to be a thriller for all of us, and it, it's a pleasure to watch Hampton be up here. You're not surprised to see this Hampton team back up here, that tradition they have in Hampton? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, you're doing a great job up here, and you got the field in good shape, and uh, if you're responsible for this weather, you did a good job on that. Right, thank you a lot. I appreciate all right. it. All right. Thanks a lot. Phil Turner. All right, Tim Barr, we have now Phil Turner, who's the athletic director here for W.T. Woodson in charge of this uh, AAA event. Uh, Phil, what all is involved in putting on a big event like this? Well, it, it takes a lot of time to put it on. We've been working on it all week because of the weather and everything, having the tarp on the field and trying to keep it nice. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of work to do, but we enjoy it. All right, uh, perfect weather today for this game. Thank goodness, yeah. Right. Phil, uh, you're up here in northern Virginia now, but you're a native from uh, Newport News. I believe you used to play for Newport News High School. That's correct. Uh, the Hampton Newport News game used to be a thriller for all of us, and it, it's a pleasure to watch Hampton be up here. You're not surprised to see this Hampton team back up here, that tradition they have in Hampton? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, you've done a great job up here, and you got the field in good shape, and uh, if you're responsible for this weather, you did a good job on that. Right, thank you a lot. I appreciate right. it. All right, thanks a lot. Phil Turner. Bob, we're still going to try to get those Crabber cheerleaders in just a moment. All right. Okay, we got uh, Lowell Thomas, principal of Hampton again. Uh, Lowell, your thoughts on this first half here? Well, AG, it was a tough first half for us, a couple bad breaks. Uh, we let a guy get by us on a run back, picked up a little more yardage than he should have. Then we got a bad call, we think, on uh, No question on, about uh, it. And that, that could make a whole lot of difference. We got to tighten up. We just got to play it right in the second half. All right. Uh, any prediction on the outcome? Well, we came up here to win. We're not ready to give that away yet. I think we're going to do it. All right, we got beautiful weather here. We're down by seven, but hopefully after the game we'll talk to you and you'll have three in a row there at Ham High School. Well, we hope so, too. It's just great to see all these people from Hampton here behind us that came up for this game. We're going to do our best, I know, to give it to them. Okay, thanks a lot. Low Thank Thomas. You. Thank you. Back at Pat Cunningham Stadium, Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and A.G. Womble. Halftime, the score. T.C. Williams, seven. The Hampton Crabbers, no score. Keith Burns scored the only touchdown of the first half. That came at 621 in the first, a one-yard TD run. And for the Crabbers, at uh, halftime, they have a total of 64 yards. Carries for 19 yards. Summers, five carries, 36 yards. Hunter had one carry for three. He was one of five for five yards passing, no interceptions. And that was the 59 yards rushing, five yards passing. Mike used to kick three times, averaged 42 yards each time he kicked. For the Titans of T.C. Williams, they were led by Lydell Scott, as you might imagine, 13 carries, 58 yards. Burns had four carries for 13. Brim, eight carries for 26 yards. And Merrill, three carries for minus two. He was two of five for 25 yards, as we see the T.C. Williams team coming on the field. Uh, and... Uh, Brim has kept his incompletion pass record complete. He was 0 for, 0 for 1 and one interception. Of course, that interception uh, by the Crabbers down at the eight yard line there in the second quarter. And again, a total of 90, uh, 120 yards total offense for the Titans and uh, their kicker. Jewsbury had one kick for 33 yards. But the big play, Bob, unfortunately for the Crabbers, the big play in the first half was that a mystery clip that was just a tough call. We talked yeah. about it here in the booth, and uh, it appeared to what happened was as the man got ready to throw his block, the man he was blocking turned his back. And, of course, so many times the official will see the latter part of a play. Absolutely, Tim. And that's exactly what happened. what happened is it was not a clip in the true sense of a clip that he was throwing the block, the man turned his back, and the official sees that, he's going to throw a flag. But uh, that was about a 50-yard uh, 
uh, walk off, if you will, uh, against the Crabbers because that really would have pumped them up, and I'm sure they could have taken that ball down and scored, and would have had a tie score here coming in to start the second half rather than uh, Hampton being behind. Uh, Seven to nothing. As you can see, the Hampton Crabbers across the the field are coming on the field. Look at that old "what if" would kill you every time. <laughs> uh, you're right there, Tim. We've got 24 minutes of football remaining in the season for both of these teams. The Hampton Crabbers, of course, looking to repeat for the third consecutive year. You went back in your. Uh, your little record book there. The last time a team could, did it three years in a row was back in 1921, 22, and 23. 23 yes. Most of these players weren't quite around at that time. <laughs> Their daddies might not have been around. There. And of course, that was a different playoff situation, I would yeah. imagine. I'm not sure. Well, it was. No, they did not have a playoff, Tim. It was uh, the teams were picked, and I noticed one year there was three different teams were picked number one. Uh, Hampton tied with uh, another team at another time. But since the playoffs have begun, uh, no team has. Uh, gone two years in a row other than Hampton and uh, I believe one other team went two years but Hampton has a chance to go three years in a row which is and of course uh, quite phenomenal in itself well to win it three years in a row and of course the Crabbers are appearing in their fourth consecutive finals and uh, as we mentioned before and if we didn't mention this of course uh, light uh, not light also but uh, Sherwood Jones and Weymouth Williams of course are the lone returnees that were on this team four years ago when they lost to T.C. Williams 10 to nothing. Yeah, they were, yeah, freshman starters back then, so they have played four years at, uh, at the Hampton High School and have been in four state championships, which is a record, uh, championship games, which is a record in itself. Uh, no team has ever gone to the state four consecutive years in a row, and Hampton, of course, has a chance to win three, so uh, uh, to say we're uh, pulling for the Crabbers would be an understatement. As you can see, Mike Smith and uh, Lanny uh, Franklin, they're walking over to the sideline and the rest of the coaching staff and the officials are huddling up over there. So uh, this game is getting ready to get going here. And we hope, of course, that uh, Todd, uh, I mean, that Eric Hunter has settled down a wee bit. T uh, Tim, we had talked during halftime that uh, all his receivers were open. He is just not uh, uh, passing the ball very good. And, of course, Mike Smith has worked on this all, see all uh, week to uh, – to get him a little confidence and say this is the receiver you pass to because it's wide open and uh, of course uh, had he uh, done that as we can see the uh, touchdown run here for the uh, that was the one yard touchdown run by Burns he just barely got in of course that's all you have to do is break the plane and that is the only scoring of the first half end of this ball game well, now Hampton is receiving again, so uh, evidently they won the toss and deferred and uh, and uh, received the ball in the first half, and they receive it again in the second half. But they're going to be looking right into the sun, Tim, as you can see. The, well, not it. It's kind of an angle, but uh, as you can see the shadows uh, that uh, the Hampton Crabbers will be going into the sun. John Jewsbury has the ball teed up back deep at the five-yard line is Grady McLean up around the 15. We have Summers and Stefanko. And we are underway to start the second half. It's a high, long kick into the end zone. It'll go in, and the Crabbers will bring it out and start from the 20-yard line. And Corey Cofield, one of the special team members for the Crabbers, comes up limping, number 87. That could be a, a serious problem for the Crabbers down the stretch. Cofield has been a, a very reliable receiver for Eric Hunter. And as you said, you know, we don't want to malign Eric Hunter because he's had some super ball games and he has done a great job this year for the Crabbers. So if he's had an off time here in the first half, that's not the norm for him. He's no. really very reliable. And he has passed it. We saw last week he threw a nice pass to Grady McLean that uh, got him to Hampton their first touchdown last week. So we we'll look for a uh, different uh, half this time with the Hampton Crabbers. This is Stefanko on the initial play of the second half. He picks up about four yards. Stefanko, uh, again, having a super season, had 1,332 yards during the regular season for the Crabbers, almost twice as much as the closest ball carrier, Summers, who had over 680 yards. Good running tandem for the Crabbers. Of course, we saw Dwayne Murphy come alive and score three touchdowns earlier in the playoffs. Yeah, we did that. That was uh, played at Todd Stadium when they uh, went against uh, Kempsville, I believe it was. At the 24, fumble, the ball is going to be recovered by the Titans. What a big play. 
Washington. That ball just, he never had a hold of the ball as he was reaching for it. It popped right into the defensive man's hand. And that really puts a tremendous pressure on the Hampton defense to allow the uh, Titans to have the ball at the 23-yard line and uh, start the second half. And uh, Hampton is, as you can see there on the instant replay, he just never did have a hold of that ball, Tim. So the, the ball carrier for the Crappers coughed it up. That was Dwayne Murphy, number 43. Left side is Lydell Scott across the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. So Kevin Brim, number 14, was the man for T.C. Williams who recovered that fumble. Now the ball is inside the 19. Pickup of almost five, second down and a long five for the Titans as they lead seven to nothing, have a golden opportunity here. On the option play, the Crabbers defended very well as Brim never got around the corner. Grady McLean, Andre Davis, Sherwood Jones, and Mabry in over there on the stop for the Crabbers. Well, he picked up maybe a half yard on that time, Tom Tim, but he came to the short side of the field, which is to the left. Uh, coming into the camera, that is the short side of the field. It's a whole lot wider on the other side, and he may have uh, wished that he had gone that side, and they're putting a split end or split receiver to the wide side of the field, and let's see what they do on uh, third and uh, uh, five. This is Scott, as he will be shy of the first down. They'll mark it at about the 16. They need to get down close to the 13 for the first down, so now the Titans will be looking at a fourth down at about three for the first down, and we're gonna see Probably a field goal kicker coming in, Tim. I don't know, I had him down as a, a mother cheetah left in the truck, but it looks like they're gonna attempt the field goal from just inside the 25. So let's call it the 24 yards, which will make a 34 yard attempt. Sims is two for five on the season in field goals. High snap, the kick is up. The kick is long enough and it's good. So Sims connects for 34 yards with 9.24 to go in the third quarter. The turnover has hurt the Crabbers. They coughed the ball up, and again, the, as I mentioned before, Williams, do, they just don't make mistakes. They've only fumbled or lost the ball six times in the last six games. Now, one of those times coming in this game on the interception, but this time the Crabbers cough it up and they convert it into a three-point field goal, so now the Crabbers are gonna have to score twice. Well, that's true. They give the cuff the ball up at the 24-25 yard line. It gives the team a, lot, a big chance to go in where the Hampton Crabbers intercepted that ball at the eight-yard line, so they were 92 yards from the end zone. So uh, Hampton is gonna have to pull their belt up and cinch it a little tighter and uh, and play some good football here this second half because they've really put themselves in a hole 10 to nothing, but there's plenty of time, uh, 924 to go in the third quarter, so they've got uh, plenty of time to do it, and they have a, a team that can score some points, Tim, as we've seen this year. So 10 to nothing is our score now as Dewsbury will have it teed up. He kicks off and punts while Sims is the field goal kicker. He is now three for six on the season. And that 34-yarder could move to be a very big one. This one is going to be taken in the end zone and it will not be brought out. You cannot bring the ball out if you go into the end zone in high school football. So they'll bring it out to the 20, same place the Crabbers started. You know, you got to think about this. The Crabbers in the very first quarter got the kickoff. They weren't able to converted on the run back by Scott. They got great field position and went in to score. Now same situation. The Crabbers get the ball to start the second half, cough the ball up. The Williams team, opportunistic as they are, go in and score. So you've got to cut down these mistakes. Basically, two mistakes, although you can't call a great run back a mistake. Scott at that last play that set up the first touchdown, the only touchdown, had been stopped initially but got away. Stefanko across the middle as the Crabbers keep the ball on the ground. They've that's, got a lot of time. There's no reason to panic. Right, and that's almost a copy, a uh, karma copy of the first time they had the ball when uh, Stavanko took the ball, went over the left side and picked up about four and a half, five yards as he did that time. So uh, Hampton just got to settle down and uh, hang on to that football. And it's not that the ball is not being knocked loose because of the defense. It's just a mishandling in the backfield. Uh, they, the handoff just did not get made that last time when they fumble the ball, Tim. Three turnovers in the ball game for the Crackers. Hunter wants
wants to air it out. He's got a man, Brady McLean, way downfield. The ball is knocked loose on good defensive coverage downfield. I look around, I don't see any flag. And maybe we'll get a chance to see that on the replay. And as number 31 defense in that time, Raymond Anderson went all the way with step for step with uh, Grady McLean. And had that ball been just a little further, uh, Grady would have got it and taken it all the way in because he had a couple of steps on him, but he had to slow up and wait for the ball. There you see one of the defenders on that play as well. That's Louis Robles. There we see downfield just the tail end of that play. And the ball knocked loose as McLean had a shot at it, but it just simply couldn't hold on. So Hunter now brings the line up, third down and six. Has some time, looks, throws, got a man open, but again, the ball is thrown incomplete. It was just not a, a well-thrown pass. Grady McLean is shaken up a little bit on the far sideline. And the Crabbers will look at it fourth down and six. They'll have to kick it away. So Hunter now is, is having difficulty getting the ball to his receivers, and he's just going to have to find his receivers if the Crabbers are going to get back in this ballgame. Well, he's done a better job on a long pass, Tim, as he had on the, than he has on the short one. Bad snap. Houston feels that it gets the kick away. It's going to hit at about the 49 and roll into T.C. Williams' territory. Takes a good roll for the Crabbers, and it'll be touched in at the 30, check that the 37 of T.C. Williams. So the Titans leading 10 to nothing, and that's got to be a little of an omen there. That was the score that the Crabbers lost the last time they lost in the state finals. That was back in 1984, but I tell you what, Tim, the Hampton Crabber defense is uh, as a team that'll come up with turnovers, and let's look for them to uh, tackle the ball and try to get a uh, force a turnover here. At the 37, Merrill is the quarterback, and there's not much happening there as the ball carrier was Burns, Keith Burns, number 48, got the call. Look at the size of number 77. That's <laughs> Choo -choo train them again. Uh, there's two trainums on this team. Uh, I assume they're brothers. One is uh, 300 pounds. I'm trying to look at what the other one is, uh, 225. He, he must get beat to the kitchen table or something. I don't know. Just a little boy. <laughs> two a and a quarter. A couple of little guys. Two and a half. Second down. This is Lionel Scott. He's dragged down by Tony Hyman. But not before he gets enough for the first down. So out at the 49 of TC Williams, the Titans will have yet another first down. There you see on the replay, there you see Scott finds the hole plugged up. A good hole made by the offensive line. There you see Tony Hyman get him by the ankle and just drag him down. But Scott. A strong running back dragged Hyman for about three yards. At their 49, T.C. Williams leading 10 to nothing. Seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Inside handoff goes to Keith Burns as he crosses the midfield stripe down close to the 48. T.C. Williams not doing anything fancy. They just simply keep coming at you. They hand off to Burns. They hand off to Scott. The quarterback, Grimm, will keep the ball. Merrill, who is now the quarterback, can run the ball as well, although he is known as the passing quarterback. Well, Hampton has done a good job of plugging up their uh, the holes. What they're doing is that the backs are bouncing to the outside. Lydell Scott with little or nothing as he's tripped up as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Weymouth Williams, number 60, was the man there to grab a hold of Scott as he got the ball. And Scott is held for a gain of maybe a yard. And he is third and long, Tim. Third down and seven. The passing quarterback is in the backfield. The play coming in from the sidelines in the form of Louis Robles, number 23, bought the play in from Glenn Furman on the near sideline. And he is the wide receiver on the far side of the field, Tim. Third and seven, look-in pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So apparently one of those big linemen, maybe we'll get a replay on that. There you see Glenn Furman, the highly successful coach here at T.C. Williams. We'll see, hopefully on a replay, maybe we can pick up which player deflected that ball. You he see. is not too, he's not happy with something went on there. Uh, one of the linemen uh, did not could do a good job of keeping the extra the other defensive lineman out. I wish I could have seen which one of the Hampton Crabbers got a hand on that. Jewsbury standing at his 38-yard line. Fourth down and long. The 
Crabbers are coming. They can't get to the ball, though. And a super kick all the way back to the nine-yard line. Stefanko makes one move, gets a little running room, and gets out to the 17. The ball comes loose, but it will be blown dead at the 17-yard line, the ruling being that his knee hit before the ball came loose. So the Crabbers with not great field position, but I guess, you know, at this point, they'll take it whenever they can get it. Well, they did a good job of stopping the there Titans see, that Mike. last time. Stefanko goes to the left, then he cuts back, eludes one tackler. But Tim, he caught that ball inside the 10. So to run that thing back to the, to the 16, 17 yard line, he picked up about maybe eight, 10 yards that time on that run back. You have to question, of course, the, the unwritten rule, or, or it might even be a written rule in, in, the, in high school, is that you don't feel that ball if it's inside the 10, but it looked like it was gonna hang up. So I think it was a good play on his part to run it back. But well, it, if it, they had a lot of defenders coming down on him, and as soft as that field is, Tim, the ball would have hit and maybe not have gone into the end zone, which then you really put the crabbers in a, uh, in a hole. Ray Murphy carried the ball. Stefanko comes out. Todd Summers brings the play in. The ball is marked at the 19-yard line. Hunter fakes, wants to throw, has some time, now gets some pressure, throws it down, and it's out of bounds as the intended receiver was Brian Gerzak up and around the 40-yard line, but the ball again, just not on the mark. Well, in fact, one of the assistant coaches on the sideline trying to catch that ball, which is pretty dangerous because I'm uh, sure he's out of bounds when he does that. That's right. <laughs> that would be an interception that the Crabbers could live with. So the Crabbers pick up about a half a yard on that incomplete pass. The mark of the ball was clearly at the 19. <laughs> now it's closer to the 20. Well, yeah, but that's where the ball is planted. But you look at the, the uh, down marker on the other side, Tim, and it's back at the 19. So. So a big third down for the Crabbers. They have not had success converting these third downs, and this is a crucial one. Hunter with a lot of time. Now he rolls, he's got a little running room, he's got a big tackle chasing him. He's gonna have the first down and more out close to the 35 yard line. Well, that's an excellent job that time. And he has not done that very much this year because he's had pretty good success in passing the ball, but that was a very important uh, job. Glenn Furman is just vehemently screaming at one of the officials or his team, I'm not sure which, but he's letting somebody As know. As we can see the instant replay here, Tim, and I don't exactly know what he's yelling and screaming at. There you saw it. Matt Henry, number 76, was chasing him, but Matt Henry not nearly as quick at, at 5'11", 195 as Eric Hunter is at 6'4". First down for the Crabbers at the 35. Hunter again wants to pass. Looks over in the middle, throws it behind Gerzak, and again the man was open. He is just not getting a ball to the people today, Tim, and, it's, and uh, I don't mean to harp on that because he's a fine young athlete. He's done an excellent job all year, but today he is just not on passing. We've seen the pros do this. You've seen but, anybody uh, do this. You you some days you can't uh, hit the receivers that you want to hit. Well, that's the case. Hunter is just not having much success, but uh, again, we have plenty of time. 420 remains in the third quarter. The Crabbers trail by the score of 10 to nothing. Keith Burns made it 7 to nothing with the extra point in the first quarter. A one-yard touchdown, and then the Crabbers turned it over on their first possession of the second half, and Sims, Ralph Sims, hit from 34 yards out to make it 10-0. This is Stefanko. He's out close to the 40-yard line. Pick that'll, up almost five. Yeah, that'll pick up a third and five, Tim. So again, we have a situation where the Hampton Crabbers have got to pick up the, uh, the necessary yardage, and uh, they have not had tremendous success in running the ball up the middle against this uh, fine T.C. Williams defense, but... Uh, each one of these plays now is very crucial to the Hampton Crabbers. They've got to get down and get some points on the, on the board. Clock continues to move. A little more than three and a half to go in the third quarter. See a momentary shot of the big crowd here at W.T. Woodson in Fairfax. Tim Cole, A.G. Womble, and Bob Hintz. And the, the Crabbers will be charged with a mistake. And that's something you don't see them do very often. Reginald Riddick. 72 for the Crabbers, just simply left before the snap. And the Crabbers now, with troubles at third and five, will have bigger troubles at third and 10. Yeah, that really hurts because uh, it's much easier to pick up five yards than it is 10, but you only have one yard to do it, Tim. So we will see a passing play here, or maybe a draw. They have been very successful last week. We saw that 
Todd Summers did an excellent job on the draw play and uh, pick up a, uh, a crucial uh, 30 some yards against uh, the Falcons. They're down in 10. Hunter again with time. Now rolls to his right. He's got a lot of running room. It's got to be tempting, but now he's going to throw it down for Hyman. and it's underthrown, and it's going to be intercepted at the 17 yard line. And uh, again, a good play on the part of the defender. The ball was just thrown short as Tony Hyman was the intended receiver. But you know, with, with third and 10, if the ball goes incomplete, you couldn't ask for a better punt. No, that's, that turn might turn out to be in uh, Hampton's favor because of the field position that the Titans have. It's going to be hard for them to take the ball and march it 80-some uh, yards down to score without making a mistake. Yeah, so, uh, if he does here's, the here's the play, Tim, on instant replays. You can see uh, Hunter running to the right. Waving his players downfield, he let it go. It went about 60 yards in the air. But unfortunately for the Crabbers, it ended up in the hands of Raymond Anderson. Right side, nothing happening. You know, I, I don't want to be a, 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 a soothsayer here because I'm certainly not in a position to do so. But I would say that this is a real crucial possession in this ballgame. Well, we've Tim, we're we down about two together. and a half minutes, yes. Yeah, so we just looked at the clock uh, to go. So the Crabbers have got to get the ball back. They've got to get some scores on the, uh, some points on the board. And you've got a good chance here. You've got the other team bottled up inside of their 20. And, of course, they haven't had a great deal of success stopping T.C. Williams on the running attack. So this will be, as I say, a crucial down, crucial possession for the Crabbers. And nothing happening there. Wrapped up neatly. Good defensive effort by the Crabbers. Over there on the stop, I believe that's number 65 for the Crabbers. Right, that's who it was, Tim. And that's Muhammad Carlos, who grabbed a hold of the quarterback, Brim, and uh, it didn't go for much. So now it's third down and long. The ball marked just shy of the 19-yard line. And again, if the Crabbers can hold here, they might have a chance to get some decent field. Well, if they can force them to punt, they'll end up with decent, punt, uh, decent uh, field position, Tim. Got to hold them first. Scott. Scott gets some good yardage. He's going to be close to a first down. He gets out to the 25. It and will Tim, depend. I believe he picked up the first down. That was an excellent run by Scott. Because Hampton hit him, and he just kept around on going and picked up and twisted and turned and picked up that necessary yardage, as we'll we can see, see here on the instant replay. Well, Andre Davis and others had a good shot at him, but that's what makes him such a good runner. He is not a guy that's easy to bring down on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Well, he does a good job of, uh, of faking and making some moves. And he did fake Wilson and Andre Davis on that play, so a good effort by Scott. And this time, not much happening as the middle of that line, Jefferson Lawrence, 55 for the Crabbers, is there quickly to put the stops on Lydell Scott. And Ricky Morrow is in quarterbacking right now for the Titans. Uh, Tim, it's uh, not Brim anymore. I wonder what kind of problems that presents for a defense when you've got a different quarterback uh, alternating in situations like that. Well, I don't know, except that uh, you have some leaders out there in the defense, and they've got to pick it up when you have a, a passing quarterback as opposed to a uh, running quarterback. And now we see that uh, Morrow going over the, the center to pick up the ball, and he's just a quarterback keeper. Quarterback keeper for about two or three. We're inside of a minute now, 25 seconds. That might, in fact, have been the last play of the third quarter. I don't think T.C. Williams is in a great rush to run the ball, and they'll be just as happy to go into the fourth quarter, leading by the score of 10 to nothing. As the clock continues to move, we may or may not get this playoff. Nine seconds. And so Brim now is just taking as much time as he can. Yeah, he's not going to snap the ball, Tim. He's not even waiting to snap it. And that's going to be it for the third quarter. So the third quarter sees one score, that being a 34-yard field goal by Ralph Sims, his third field goal in six attempts this season for the Titans. And that's the way we stand after three quarters. The Hampton Crabbers, defending state champions, trailing by the score of 10 to nothing. And uh, Bob, what would you possibly do? I'm gonna put you on the spot here <laughs> as, the, uh, as the coach. You're the coach now, fourth quarter, Hampton leading, or trailing rather by 10 to nothing. What well, would your attack, or what would you well, do now? Well, you got a third and four, Tim. First thing you've got to do is you got to get your defense to tighten up a little bit and, and stop Lydell in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage. Don't let him pick up that uh, first down because 
you and I have seen all day long that, that he's the man that they give the ball to normally when they want to pick up three or four yards. Then you've got to tell that defense, we stop them right now. Uh, that means they've got a punt. We got the ball, decent field position. Let's take offense. Let's uh, go down and score. Then when we kick off, Hampton does a good job of onside kicking, a little uh, a little uh, high lobber over the front line and maybe get the ball back and go down and score. So they're going to have to do some things, but uh, that's some of the options. The first thing you got to do right now is you got to stop them and make them punt. So what do you tell them defensively, Tim? I don't know, except... All right, fellas, uh, this is for the, all the cookies, all the marbles. You don't have to tell these young men because the Hampton Crabbers have that winning tradition. They have the incentive to win. They have shown that game after game. And uh, if they can do it, they'll do it. There's no question about it. Third down and four. And they stop the ball carrier right at the 35-yard line. And so he had to get close. across that, I believe, Tim. Yeah, it would appear, depending, again, where they mark the ball, it's going to be marked on the left side of the 35 and that will present a fourth down for the Titans. So it's going to be about a yard or a yard and a half shy of the first down. And Glenn Furman will not take any chances at this point. He probably could get the yardage, but boy, if you don't give it up, you got you, you really got yourself in a Well, you, you put you give Hampton too much of a, an opportunity there to uh, uh, score from uh, 30, 35 yards out. So they've got to punt the ball. There's no doubt about that. Uh, We've seen an excellent run back one time by Stefanko today, which was a penalty called on it, but it looks like the Crabbers are going in for the block. They try to. They do not make contact with either the ball or the ball care, the, uh, the kicker, so it'll go roll down inside the 30-yard line, right at the 30, so the Crabbers will be 70 yards away, and that was a good kick. The line of scrimmage was the 35, so you figure 15 yards on that end and another 20. That's about a 35-yard uh, kick. No return, that's important too. Okay, well now they've done what they had to do, Tim. They stopped them, made a punt. We got decent field position. We're at the 30, we got 70 yards. We got 11 minutes to take this ball down and get our first score. And then we got to go with the onside kick, get the ball back. And then make the second score. And I predict it's going to be about 14 to 10 when we finish up. I like your attitude. So 36 yards away from pay dirt, Eric Hunter brings them out. Drops back to pass, first down. Got a man open, completes the pass. These short passes are what you said the Crabbers would be able to get, and they've got to capitalize on them. To this point in the game, they have not been able to do so. Corey Cofield was on the receiving end of that pass. And he came out of the backfield, Tim, I believe. I, I, I didn't see where he lined, lined up, but we got a second and five now. But uh, we've got to get this ball down and get it in the uh, end zone uh, with not too much time run off the clock. Now, I'm not saying that we got to panic, but uh, we need to get a score. And now we've got flags down, and we'll wait and see who this will be charged against. There is going to be a penalty, and if it's against the Crabbers, which it appears it may well be, the referee is indicating illegal procedure against the Crabbers. Well, I so tell you, we have not penalty. seen the Crabbers uh, do this uh, look out of sync as much as they're doing right now, except in the, in the Bethel game, we thought that they just didn't uh, play up to their potential, Tim, but uh, they're making mistakes out there, mental mistakes that they don't make. You don't get here by making those kind of mistakes, and if the Crabbers can regroup here, they still have a chance in this ball game. 10-0-2, the clock moving. 10 to nothing is our score. The Crabbers have it cut out for them. At the 29, second down and 11. Hunter again wants to pass, wants to throw long. He's got Hyman behind me. Oh, he's got the football. He's got it at the 30. Tony Hyman will score, score, Jim. What an excellent call. I don't know how that defensive man let Tony Hyman get behind him, but boy, we have oh, said all what? day long that he is excellent on a, on a long pass, and that puts Hampton right back smack in the middle of this ball game, Tim, with 9.38 to go. Hampton's got the ball. They scored their, their uh, initial touchdown, and uh, we got a barn burner, boy. Holy smokes, what a pass. Eric Hunter threw it right on the numbers. After this extra point, we'll hopefully have a replay of that for you. Mike Houston will be on to try that extra point, and all of Important extra point it is. I remind you, 9.38 remains in the ball game. Houston, bad snap, and the ball is going to be 
No good. So a bad snap from center, or at least mishandled by the holder. And the Crabbers will find themselves four points down. Well, Tim, they're going to score another touchdown. I told you they're going to score two. It's going to be 14 to 10 end up because they'll score and then get the two-point conversion. Here we go. Here's the pass. I'm going to let it speak for itself. Hunter is going to drop back and throw it from his 22-yard line. Hyman on the numbers at the 30-yard line. Did a good job of stretching to catch that ball. And then just yards. outran the uh, defender. They had no chance to catch him. 50 yards in the air, right on the numbers. So, Tim. Mr. Hunter, our hat's off to you. You had a tough first half. You've had a tough time going here. But, boy, did you just make up with it for a 69-yard touchdown pass. Well, that was an excellent uh, pass and catch, Tim. But on that extra point, I don't think it was a bad center. What I believe happened is the holder just momentarily took his eyes off the ball and uh, just never did do it, get a good, uh, didn't catch the ball. Well, I was all set to talk about how overtime works in this this particular game and in the Virginia High School Football League, but that's not a, a major problem right now because with a four-point difference, you've got to have a touchdown on the part of the Crabbers to have a chance at this. Ten to six. My, 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 what a beautiful play. Hunter to Hyman. Hunter threw that ball 50 yards in the air. And right in stride. I tell you, Hyman did a good job oh, just stretching out, job. catching the ball, did not break stride. Not a, another inch, and Hyman wouldn't have been able to get to it. A low kick, fielded at the 10-yard line. Driven out of bounds, close to the 20. Number 11 for the Crabbers, uh, Antonio Williams was downfield early, hit the ball carrier, but uh, just slowed him down. And, uh, and now Hampton's got a good chance. We got They got the ball defensively. It's on the 29-yard line. And listen to that Hampton Crabber crowd over there going wild, Tim. All right, we're getting down to the punch time. Punch time. 29-yard line, first and 10. Two yards, and that's all. Faithful getting fired up on the far side of the field. Well, I tell you, I've, I've not seen a whole lot of emotion from the defensive unit with the Crabbers this year. They just go out and they do the job and they don't do a whole lot of emotion, but we can see some emotion out there right now, and that's what they need to do. Get pumped up and play the defense that we know they're capable of playing. 70 yard touchdown will pump you up every time. Pick up of about two, second down and eight. On the quarterback keeper, not much. Hampton side of the field cheering with every play now as the Crabbers are back in the ball game. Get on the stop for the Crabbers. 65 is Mohamed Carlos. His name and number have been called a number of times today. And he also in over there, tough. Tim also in over there was number uh, 22 for the Crabbers, uh, Grady McLean, and he is uh, going both ways. We have a lot of ball players for the Crabbers that go both ways. Big third down and seven. 827 remaining in the ball game. And the quarterback is Brim. This is Lydell Scott. He's got the first down. Tim, he just did a good job of spinning away from a tackler. And I know that one of the Hampton Crabbers, number 70 for, for Hampton over there, that's uh, Sherwood Jones, is complaining because it looked like somebody was holding him that time. And he was really upset and was talking to the official about it. It'll go for naught as they have marked the ball right on the 40-yard line. First and 10. Eight minutes and three seconds, clock is moving. T.C. Williams leading 10 to six. Mishandle on the snap, but it's recovered by Brim. He gets about three. Looked like a little difficulty on the exchange from center. The Crabbers would love nothing more than to have a ball pop loose right now. Boy, and pop right into one of their hands because that's what basically what happened to uh, that fumble that Hampton gave up at their 20-some yard line was that the ball was never fully got into the uh, runner's hand and, and it bounced right into a defensive uh, player's hand. But uh, now we got a second and long and uh, watch this, this Hampton defense really get tough, Tim. Second down and seven. Brim is the quarterback. Right side, Burns, not much. Burns out to the 45. They need to get to the 50 yard line for a first down. So it's gonna be third down and five. And without overusing my big play situation, this has <laughs> got to be a big one. Thirty-five, well, seven minutes to go. Yeah. Clock moving. 
Absolutely, Tim, and look for number 40, Lionel Scott, to get the ball. He's been the man that they've you gone to every time they needed to pick up big yardage. They need a little more than five. Brim is the quarterback. Scott and Burns are in the backfield. He's got it, and then some, as Lydell Scott is all the way down to the Hampton 43-yard line. Well, that was an excellent trap play up the center. I don't know how he got through there, but he went through went through this, the line of scrimmage virtually untouched that time. Well, let's see. We're going to see it on the replay here. What happened was the Hampton, they caught Hampton into a uh, slant, it uh, looks like, or something. Scott just doesn't come down easily. The offensive line did a good job that time for T.C. Williams. Brim mix up in the backfield, nothing happening there as Muhammad Carlos falls on Lydell Scott. We're inside of six and a half minutes to go. Clock continues to move. The Crabbers now are looking at a second down and 10. Ball is on the 44 yard line of Hampton. Tim has six minutes to go in the game and uh... So you saw that, you saw the replay there. There was a mix-up between Brim and Scott. You have to wonder if alternating quarterbacks at times doesn't create a little bit of a problem with the exchange. Brim along the line of scrimmage, turns it inside. He's tripped up as he gets down to the 42-yard line. Todd Summers, again, another one of those two-way players for the Crabbers, was there to put the arm tackle on the quarterback, Brim. And El Barkin at the Hampton 41. And again, third down and big yardage here. Third down and seven. Oh, Tim, that's closer to eight. <laughs> I'm not going to give him seven. That's, that's third and eight, Tim. <laughs> 520 remains in the ball game. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and A.G. Womble from Cunningham Stadium in Fairfax, Virginia. Big play, third Tim, down. big play. Third down and a long seven. Rim wants to pass. He doesn't normally pass. It's going to be a long throw. Yeah. It's incomplete. And, and it's out covers. of bounds, Tim. It was out of bounds. Had he caught it, he'd have been out of bounds. So Brim keeps his passing record intact as he is still yet to complete a pass this season. But he's not the passing quarterback. you got to wonder. I guess if they brought in Morrow, then the Crabbers might have been able to smell pass. But in this case, they kind of tried to... to Cross up the Crabber defense. It didn't work for T.C. Williams. The clock stops with exactly five minutes remaining. With and Jewsbury will be in a punt. Yeah, formation. number 10 is the punter for him, Tim. So the Crabbers have a chance. Stefanko standing back at his five, a high snap. The right-footed kicker gets a good kick away. And it's going to take a roll, and hopefully for the Crabbers, it'll make it into the end zone. But it's not going to. It's going to go out of bounds at the five-yard line. Oh, so 95 play. yards, Tim. Tough play, 95 yards. The wind is blowing across the field and a little towards the kicker. So that kind of helped T.C. Williams in the sense that it held up the ball. And it was a perfect kick. Went out of bounds at the five-yard line. You couldn't ask for your opponent to do a better job. Well, the Crabbers have their destiny in their own hands. They've well, they got do the ball that, at Tim, their five. But they have a long way to go with 448 to, to play in the game. They've got to go down, and a field goal will do them absolutely no good. They have got to score a touchdown. That's the only way they're going to win this game. But we have seen they're very explosive. And uh, when you left uh, Hunter throw that ball long, he has uh, excellent... Stefanko trying to get outside, looking for a block. He gets one. He's up close to the 20-yard line. And that'll stop the clock while they move the chains, Tim, but that was an excellent call. I know they were looking for a pass, but down there, Mike Smith gave the ball to his bread and butter man. Uh, and he was Let's sitting on this replay, and he just avoided, got some good blocking at the line of scrimmage, and just outran some people. He is so quick. Stefanko has that good step. He gets to the line of scrimmage so quickly that that's probably his best asset. Okay. Clock is restarted. 4-10 remain in the ball game. Hunter fumbles the snap. Stefanko ends up on it, I believe. Yes. That could have been disastrous for the Crabbers. As Hunter, I don't know if we'll see a replay on that, but Hunter mishandled the snap from center, and that ball was precariously bouncing Well, here we can see. see. May have, might have been that one of the... Uh, it looked like someone, the uh, the ball carrier coming up actually knocked it out of Hunter's hands. Well, it was definitely a pass play that time. And that, of course, they lost about four yards. 
So it's second down and about 14. Hunter looks in, has McLean open. He can't get the ball to him, though. Again, McLean is open. The ball just shown, just thrown a little too long for Freddie McLean. Well, McLean, I watched McLean that time, Tim, and he, and he went down, made his, bro, made his break, and hesitated for some reason. If he'd have kept on going, he would have got the ball would have been right on the money. That time, I can't say it was Hunter's fault. It looked like more that Grady just didn't, well, uh, you know, it was about a quarter of a second late getting to a spot. You know, that's a, a point that is well made because a lot of times a, a quarterback can look good when he's got his self working for the day, but sometimes his receivers will make him look bad. That's true. The clock stops with 328. It's third down and 14. Hunter has to get 14 yards. He throws downfield. It's knocked away incomplete as it was almost intercepted by that Jeff Brim, the man who recovered the fumble for the T.C. Williams team earlier in the ballgame. So the Crabbers now will have to kick the ball away, or at least will apparently kick the ball away. Yeah, we can see an answer replay on uh, Hunter rolling out to the right and throwing a ball, Tim. But uh, don't look for the Campton to, yeah, they are gonna punt the ball. Houston gets a beautiful kick away. T.C. Williams had nobody back. And the ball will roll dead at the 43 yard line. So the T.C. Williams Titans have the ball. 3.09 remains in the ball game. And they lead by the score of 10 to 6. And Mike Houston again from the shadow of his own goal line, his own goal post, and got away a booming, spiraling kick. Well, it's now we got to get the ball, Tim. They, you can look for him tackling the ball. Hampton's got three timeouts. They can stop the clock. There's 309 to go. So we still have time to, to uh, do something here. At the 43-yard line, T.C. Williams leading 10 to 6. Inside handoff, across the 40, check that the 35 to about the 37. At this moment, no timeout has been called. Clock will continue to move. Well, they can't wait too long to stop that, that clock because they're going to take their full 25 seconds, I believe, because they blew the whistle at 3.39. I'm sorry, 2.39. Shadows lengthening here at Cunningham Stadium late in the afternoon. Travers trying to repeat a third consecutive year. No one has done that since the institution of the playoff system. Quarterback keeper, Merrow, nothing happening there as he will come up with maybe Time out yards. now. They got to call. Yes, they do. They're calling the timeout, Tim. 2-10 remaining. Of course, you have to, you can't use your timeouts too quickly because if you do, then of course they get a first down, they can run the clock out on you. So you got to stop them, which the Travers have done in a sense. It's third down and about six. And this is about the fourth crucial third down play there has been. <laughs> well, this this is definitely crucial. Definitely crucial. 209 remains. We will hope that you'll stay tuned. We win, lose, or draw. We hope to have A.G. Wobble down on the field after the game to interview some of the players and coaches. The Hampton Crabbers looking for victory number 13 this season. They're 12 and 1. E.T.C. Williams is 13 and 0, and we have seen a superb ball game by both sides. T.C. Williams has has played well because they haven't made the number of mistakes that the Crabbers have. They haven't had those illegal procedure calls. They haven't knocked uh, the, the ball up in their 10-yard well, line. Well, and they, have, they got the, the clipping penalty, which I think is, you go back to that, Tim, that was a very, very big play because Hampton would have had the ball down around the 30-yard line with the momentum going, and they would have been looking to uh, to take that ball in, which I, you know, could very well have been 7-7 at halftime rather than 7 to nothing. No question so that was an, uh, a very, very big play. And, and a questionable call. Plays. I think it was questionable. Big plays. This is it. 209. Third down and about seven. Grim fakes, runs the line of scrimmage. No first down coming here. It's going to be fourth down and about two. I might have called timeout here, Tim, if I was coach. I don't know, but because you know they're going to take their time. It's fourth down. They're going to put the ball. They may just take a five yard penalty, run a lot of time off the clock. It's 140 and going. Grabbers uh, will have about a minute and 20 seconds remaining in the ball game when they get the ball back. They, they have gone it. for the block the last two or three times that the Titans have, they have uh, gone in a punt formation. It looks like they're going for it now. They don't have uh, a return setup. It's the 
Famco, the only man off of the line of scrimmage for the Crabbers. High snap! It's a high snap all the way down inside the 15-yard line. That ball is up for grabs. The Crabbers are going to have it inside their five-yard line. Oh, what, a, what a throw oh, is this, Tim. What a turn of events. Holy Hampton can smokes, take this ball in with less than a minute and 20 to go. Take the lead. Oh, wow. Can you believe that? That, that might have been a better job had the guy picked the ball up, ran it into the end zone, giving him the two-point uh, two safety, Tim. That may have been a better call for him. Holy At this point, Hampton's has got the ball, what, up the three-yard line, four-yard line, Tim. The clock is restarted, a minute, 13 seconds. It looked like the Crabbers were in terrible condition, and now they've got it first and goal at the three-yard line. Tony Hyman lines up, and now he gets off the field. He's not sure whether he's the 12th man or not. Flags down, motion, he got a penalty. They stopped the play. The clock stopped with 58 seconds to go. Illegal shift against the Crabbers. We've seen some confusion on the part of the Crabbers you don't normally see. Tony Hyman didn't know whether he needed to stay on the field or go off the field. And then they had an illegal motion because he wasn't sure. Oh, wow. Seeing Tim, a field goal doesn't do you any good. You got to score. That's going to take him back to about the eight or nine yard line. And if they don't take the penalty, the uh, coaching staff is crazy. Well, they're going to take the penalty. That's the question about that. You've got to make that team get the yardage. The downs aren't nearly as important as where you are on the field right And now. the time, Tim. So we got a first down, still a first down, and goal from the eight. And now the Crabbers are going to call a timeout. Well, I think that's an intelligent timeout call. you got to get in and call a couple of plays. Uh, a bad, uh, uh, what might not be a bad call right now is a... Uh, uh, a quarterback option to the right where uh, Eric's got a, ch a tra choice to, <laughs> I'm so excited, I can't talk, to pass the ball uh, or run it or get the ball out of bounds to stop the clock. Who would have imagined in a fourth down at their 40-yard line, the snap went way over the, the kicker's head. He had absolutely no chance to field the ball. And if it rolled into the end zone and the Cavers had grabbed it, it was a touchdown. That was a grabbed, touchdown. It would have been better for T.C. Williams, as you said, to have somehow, if they could have, to have fielded the ball and run in for the safety. Because then at least you would have a 10-8 to 8 ball game and you'd have a free kick. But now the Cavers, eight yards away from repeating their third consecutive championship, they have one timeout remaining, 58 seconds on the clock, first and goal at the eight. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I just about in my own mind said, well, it's going to be almost impossible now because they're going to get the ball back with less than two minutes. They're going to be deep in their own territory. And lo and behold, you have that happen. You have a bad snap from center. Just one of those intangibles you can't anticipate. <laughs> the way a championship game's supposed to be, Tim, supposed to go down to the wire. And it is. Hang on. And both sides are standing up and hollering, both the Hampton side and the... Uh, the T.C. Williams side. Hunter is saying he cannot hear the, the call. The official said, don't, don't talk to me about it. Go, oh no. And that is a lateral. That is a lateral. Dang. It will not stop the clock. So just one of those cases where you look downfield trying to run before you have the ball. Grady McLean, who has done a great job all year long for the Crabbers, now a timeout being called. The clock stops with 40 seconds to go, and Hampton will call their last timeout. So they, the pass play, there you see it on the replay. It was, in fact, a lateral play. It did not go forward from the line of scrimmage, and fortunately for the Crowers, they were able to recover, but now it's second down and goal at the 10, but they have no timeouts remaining, and there are but 40 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Uh, you know, that was a, a call that the, the half the Crabbers made that call because they feel like evidently the, if Grady gets the ball, one and one is going to be hard to stop him, and I'm sure that's what they were thinking, but you got to catch the ball first, and uh, oh, what a... What a way to end up the season, I'll tell you, for both teams to come down to 40 seconds to go. You got a second down uh, and goal now from the 10-yard line. Started off on the four. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. My stomach's turning, Tim. I'm, uh, I, and I know that the uh, the Hampton people on the other side are just, just going crazy trying to figure out how we can get this ball in the end zone. 
near side making as much noise as they can. There you see the T.C. Williams team exhorting the crowd to make it difficult for Hunter. Hunter, second down and goal in 10. Looks at the end zone, and it's intercepted. Well, Tim, I, you can see the crowd. That kind of sums it up. That kind of sums it up. It was a hard pass to throw from across the field. He was throwing all the way across the field in the end zone, and they were looking for the pass. They had three defenders back there. The ball not even close to the intended receiver, Hyman, and the Crappers with a golden opportunity apparently are going to see it slip through their fingers. I don't, the quarterback isn't even going to hand the ball off to him. He's going to take it, put a knee down, and that's all he's going to do. He doesn't have to do more because the Crabbers can't stop the clock. So they had their chances. They just couldn't come up with it when they needed it. Merrill will, in fact, try and go forward, but that's going to be academic at this point. And it's going to be tough for AG to talk to some of the Crabbers after this heartbreaking loss. But he'll try to, and we'll hopefully have you stand by at the conclusion of the ball game. Just 10 seconds remaining. The crowd will count it down for you. For the long walk across the field for head coach Mike Smith. As he will gather his players together, he will undoubtedly, as you'll see, congratulate Glenn Furman. On a super hard fought ball game, the Crabbers had a great opportunity only to see it slip through their fingers. Well, the first and 10 with 48 seconds, uh, first and goal from the four yard line with 48 seconds to go, I would have I would have bet my house that Hampton was going to score, Tim. That's how sure I was that Hampton's going to come out, and I was predicting that, that they would score twice, and it looked like I was going to come out uh, as a predictor there, but. Uh, Maybe you and I could go over to Laurel uh, racetrack <laughs> after the game here, and we could use some of your. Uh, you, you look good for a minute there, buddy. You look good because the. And here we can see on instant replay the pass going all the way across the field into the corner of the end zone, and uh, of course Hyman was open, but he was open deep. The ball had to be let, lofted over the head of that receiver, and he wasn't. So uh, he was able to. The, the defender was able to pick the ball off and uh, run it back up the field, and of course then they just ran the ball out. Run the timeout. Terry Jordan, number 86 for the Titans of T.C. Williams, is the man who came up with that interception. You see the score. That's the same score that Hampton won by last week, and they fall by that score this week, 10 to 6, in a game that was as good a game as you want to see. Hard-fought game, and uh, we'll be going down to the sidelines momentarily as A.G. Womble will hopefully take a, a moment or two to find somebody to talk to. It's going to be hard to find somebody to talk to, Tim. It's hard to talk to anybody when you lose a championship game. Uh, and these young men were very emotional. They went out there. They played their hearts out. Uh, could very well come come away with the championship, which I thought they were going to do. And uh, uh, But you can't take anything away from this T.C. Williams team. They did an excellent job. Um, I just feel sorry for the, the young men for the Hampton High School Crabbers because this was a... Uh, a goal that they had set for themselves at the beginning of the year to repeat as a, a third uh, state championship in a row. And of course, they fell just short by four points, Tim. We're going to have the presentation of the trophy on the field. There you see the victorious T.C. Williams Titans as they are rejoicing this hard fought victory. And they've got the trophies. We can see some of the Hampton Crabbers walking off. Uh, Well, well, we'll hold on and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to some of these guys. Uh, they played a super game. They played a super season. The Hampton Crabbers have absolutely nothing to be sorry about or upset about. They played a great game. They had their chance and the destiny was in their hands. They had a first and goal on that bad snap from center. They had every opportunity to take the ball in and win this ball game. But T.C. Williams came up with a big play at the right time. And that's the way it goes. The Hampton Crabbers end the season on a sour note, but it's been a great season. The Crabbers will be back. The, the large number of these players will return. Uh, one of the key players that has not been in the lineup for the Hampton Crabbers the last three games is Kenneth Owens. 
uh, number two, who played a, a great deal for the Crabbers early in the season. Tony Hyman is a junior. He'll be back. Eric Hunter, the quarterback, will be back. Uh, Todd Summers, if, Todd if Summers you haven't mentioned a, him already, I know he's a junior. He's a junior, as well as uh, Murphy. Dwayne Murphy is a sophomore. I predict great things for Dwayne Murphy in the seasons to come. He'll be back for two more years for the Crabbers. Uh, Mike Stefanko is a graduating senior, as is Weymouth Williams and Sherwood Jones. Uh, Jones and Williams have had outstanding careers at Hampton High School for the last four years. Uh, Mohamed Car Carlos will be back. J uh, Tim, he's just a junior. He's played superbly for the Hampton Crabbers. Uh, let me see here who else we got that we can talk about. James Wilson, 88 for the Crabbers, will be back. Brian Gersack is just a sophomore. Coza uh, Cofield will be uh, graduating this year, however. James Wilson is just a junior. So they've got he's got a, a, a good crew to uh, build with next year, a nice nucleus to build with. But well, the uh, Crabbers will be back, there's no question about that. And it's unfortunate for our, the Hampton faithful that uh, the Crabbers were not able to pull it out. The T.C. Williams team uh, could not have been any more opportunistic if they had tried. They uh, scored early in the ball game on their first possession after a good run back by Lydell Scott, set them up in good field position, and then they scored on Keith Burns' one-yard plunge with 6.21 to go in the first quarter. And that's the way it stood at halftime. It was 7 to nothing in favor of the T.C. Williams team at halftime. And then they made it 10 to nothing with 9.24 to go in the third quarter. The Crabbers got the second half kickoff and a fumble gave the ball to T.C. Williams at the eight yard line. They were unable to move it in for the touchdown, but they kicked a 34 yard field goal. Ralph Sims from 34 yards out, it was 10 to nothing. Then the Crabbers on a tremendous throw from Eric Hunter to Tony Hyman of 70 yards. The ball went 50 yards in the air, and uh, Hyman took it in. The extra point try was no good on a mishandled snap from center, and the Crabbers trailed 10 to 6, and it looked real bad for them. It looked like they were going to have uh, the final score at 10 to 6, as it turned out, and then the Crabbers got a big break on a bad snap from center. The ball ended up as a first and goal at the four for the Crabbers. They had four downs, they had two timeouts, they had a chance. They just simply weren't able to convert it and the T.C. Williams Titans are the reigning state champions for 1987. Your final thoughts, Bob? Well, Tim, I just want to take my hat off to the Hampton Crabbers coaching staff, the Hampton Crabbers football team and the supporters. They've just done a tremendous job of following this team. They have, they have nothing to be ashamed of. You don't get to the state uh, final championship four times in four years, four straight times. And uh, uh, I just, I'm sorry for them that they didn't end up with it, but it was a good game from a spectator standpoint, Tim, and uh, I think we need to wrap it up now and uh, head on home. Our crew's done an excellent job, and I want to again take this opportunity to thank you and the crew. Uh, we just enjoyed this, and they do a lot of uh, work getting up here early and getting this thing set up for us. All right, our final score again, the Hampton Crabbers losing in the state finals 10-6 to at the hands of the T.C. Williams Titans. Again, our thanks to our entire crew. There you see the names of these fine people who have endured terrible weather throughout the playoffs only to come up here and bask in the sun of Cunningham <laughs> Stadium and uh, maybe the Crabbers would have done better if they had freezing cold weather who knows again our final score 10 to 6 uh, hope you'll let channel 29 know how you feel about your coverage of high school sports we are happy to announce that uh, although the football season has ended we will be back doing some basketball games for you and hope to see you then again the final score T.C. Williams 10 Hampton 6 for Bob Hintz A.G. Wobble the entire crew thanks for watching good afternoon everybody